Hi, I'm Todd Hopley, and today I'm joined in the studio by Michael Sharinga, President and CEO of BBA Aviation Flight Support. Michael, thank you for being here. Good morning. Uh, BBA Aviation is a huge enterprise spread across multiple continents. Talk to our viewers about the company itself. So BBA Aviation um, has 14,000 team members worldwide. We have locations on over 200 airports and most people don't affiliate BB Aviation with a field operation because they know us by our brand names. We have four principal companies. The largest um, in terms of revenue is Signature Flight Support, the largest FBO network in the world. The second largest uh, business we have is Aircraft Service International Group, ASIG, which does commercial fuel farms, into plane fueling, putting you know, into wing uh, fuel, and a ground handling business. And that all falls under ASIG. We have an engine repair and overhaul shop known as Dallas Airmotive, and then a proprietary parts business called Ontech. And those four corporations together make up BB Aviation, roughly a two and a half billion dollar organization. And signature flight support is what a lot of our members would know uh, about BBA Aviation. That is a billion dollar plus business. Um, Signature itself is now on 127 airports around the world. Now, you've had an, your entire career has really been aviation focused, whether working at uh, US Airways or uh, flight options coming to Signature, now the CEO of uh, a broader part of that business, uh, an industry leader, you're the former chair of NATA. Uh, so you've, you've been in around public policy issues in aviation for your whole career. One of the issues that we've talked about over time has been the issue of infrastructure investment uh, at airports. And for airport directors, that's a big issue. Uh, aging facilities, the need for both airside and landside improvements. But it's not just the airport directors that care about that infrastructure investment. FBOs care about that as well. Absolutely. Uh, you've uh, talked about the need to um, expand the length of leases. Uh, you've talked about the willingness of private equity to come in and private sector come in and invest in airports. Why? Just talk about that issue and why you think there needs to be sort of an adjustment in the way airports view that relationship. Yeah. So I joined Signature in 2009, and prior to that, um, I would have focused on the airport infrastructure from an airline perspective. And many people know the airlines, whether they had proprietary gates versus common use gates, and there was a view that most leases for airports needed to be shorter in length because of airline turnover, consolidation, bankruptcies. And in most cases, the commercial airline is not the funder of inf infrastructure improvement, it's the airport and then the airline pays rent. When I came to the side of general aviation, there's a different economic equation where in most airports, right, the FBO operator is responsible for the capital improvements on leasehold land. And so the trend to make shorter term leases had a direct economic input or ec economic impact on how you could amortize those leases over time. So for instance, if we were to build a $10 million hangar and you only had five years of lease term, you only had the ability to amortize $10 million over five years, therefore making it cost prohibitive in order to cha charge rent uh, for that hangar facility. So in 2010, um, we embarked upon a initiative to uh, expand the lease term you know, in most of the airports that we had around the country. Um, we formed a general aviation infrastructure investment coalition, and that investment coalition, or that uh, coalition, right, uh, kind of stubbed its toe when we first got off, and that uh, we thought legislation was the way to go forward. In retrospect, right, what we found, right, with both AAAE and ACI, is that what we should have done is a joint education. 
and clearly understand what the economics are on the airport side, the economics on our side of the business being the long-term holder and capital expenditures, and how can we create a win-win for additional investment. This year, um, BBA Aviation Signature Flight Support, we have almost $200 million worth of construction projects going on throughout the Signature Network. Um, five years ago, as an industry, we said if we could get longer term leases, the general aviation industry in the United States could potentially start over a billion dollars worth of capital improvements across uh, uh, the entire general aviation mm -hmm. network. So what Signature did after the General Aviation Infrastructure Investment Coalition is we embarked on direct negotiations with each one of the airports where we saw a need for capital expansion um, and get a commensurate lease term and that could be in years, or if not in years, a buyout of unamortized amounts to allow us to amortize a lease for up to 39 and a half years, which is what the IRS allows for commercial construction. And we have had some great success across the United States with lease extensions that have allowed us to build new hangars, new FBOs um, at some of the primary gateways around the United States. So that, uh, that education, having this conversation, this dialogue is really helped uh, open doors for infrastructure investment. Um, absolutely. And so, as, as I said, you know, our single largest project right now is 200,000 square feet of hangar space and a new FBO at the San Jose International Airport. But we've opened new, uh, new terminals or new FBOs at Newark, um, at uh, Chicago O'Hare, Minneapolis St. Paul. We've just refurbished all of the hangars at Minneapolis St. Paul, and there's more to come. So I'm very excited about the construction we have going on. You mentioned ASIG, and we don't we don't have a lot of time left. But I did want to talk a little bit about grand, ground handling. You have a lot of employees there, and you've also been outspoken about the need for minimum standards uh, for training and making sure you've got the professionals in there. Talk about how important that is, and how important safety is uh, in your business. Uh, so while I was at U.S. Air we instituted the first ASAP program of an airline at US Air. When I was at Flight Options, we instituted the first uh, ASAP program in the charter industry or the 135 world. When I came into the ground handling side of the business is I was surprised as a industry at some of the lack of standards across the ground handlers, but also not only standards in terms of training, but standards in terms of just economic wherewithal coming on to an airport, which would include, for instance, insurance policies. So as a ground handling company, right, we have an umbrella insurance agreement that covers us for a billion dollars of coverage. We're competing against some ground handling companies that have only $40 million of coverage. Now, if you have $40 million of coverage, and you're touching a $250 million airplane and there's passengers on it, if you were to think about the consequential damages and the liability associated with that. So when I come and talk about kind of a level playing field is I think that there is a discussion to be had between airports, airlines, and the ground handling industry in to raise the bar in terms of training uniform training for ramp personnel across an individual airport or across the country um, from a safety perspective, a security perspective. So if people are all following the same procedures and, and we follow the same issues on a ramp, whether it's the speed we go on a roadway on a ramp or how we fuel an airplane into plane. So if everyone had the same process, Right. Everyone would be audited to the same standard. Um, in, and I'll just give a separate example. Today, if we service uh, eight different airlines that all fly an A320, we could have eight different fueling procedures on servicing that A320. Right? And because our fueling procedures are unique to the air carrier, right? not to the airplane type. And so whether it's an insurance standard, training standards, or a safety standard, what we think is that there is a dialogue to be had by all the constituents surrounding that airplane and invested interest in improving safety and security on airports. It's a great example. I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate your thoughtful approach and your willingness to, 
dialogue and have conversations uh, going forward about how we can partner and work together on behalf of the industry. Michael, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for having me.